Hi, welcome to EPAC 3D. My name is Jesus, and today I'll be showing you how to install the new parallel light matrix for the X10. So first things first, we're going to go through everything you'll need. Of course, the matrix itself. You'll have a little driver board here for your LEDs. Next, it'll come with a small bag of screws, every screw you'll need. It'll come with two large brackets. One size bracket has is a little bit longer in this area than the other. And then you'll have two identical smaller brackets down here. Next, you're probably going to need a 3mm and 2.5mm hex keys. You're going to need two Phoenix connectors, which you should be able to get off from the old uh, LED fans and light source. You'll need a set of wire strippers, and you'll need a set of wire cutters as well. And then for the purposes, for this purpose, I will be using a grounder. So I'll just attach myself to the chassis, so I'm saying always grounded, not going to produce any static shock that could damage any of the electrical components here. Alright, so for this part, we're just going to be uninstalling the old light source now. So first things first, you're going to want to probably just flip the printer on its top, or you can set it on its back if you'd rather do that. For this purpose, we're just going to flip it on its top, it'll be easier to show you like that. So first things first, you're going to want to start unplugging everything on the main board. So, there's going to be a lot of red glue, more than likely, when you open this up. So you're going to need to scrape that off first. It's just there to hold it in place while shipping. Come on, there we go. Alright, Ethernet port, USB, and we're going to take off the touchscreen cable here. Take off the screen cable here. Now we can go ahead and grab our 2.5 millimeter driver. We're just going to go ahead and unscrew the main board. Something you can do is mark on the green Phoenix cable connectors here. Uh, go ahead and mark them so you don't confuse yourself on where to put the uh, the new Phoenix connectors. Uh, all right. Take all of this main board successfully taken off. All right. Next is this board here. Just looks like it's just a switchboard, and you're going to also be using a 2.5 millimeter driver for this. So that's already taken off. Now, you can take your three millimeter driver. You take this. The screws are probably going to be on very tight, so you might need a little bit of force to actually torque them off. Now you've taken all of that off, we'll go ahead and we're going to cut away all of these zip ties here so we can free up all the cables and that'll have us access to the, the bracket down here. Alright, so now that we've gotten all of our wires loosened from the zip ties, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut these, this wire, coming from the power input here, off of this connection here. Another thing you can do, uh, we don't really recommend it, it's not really the proper way to do this, but you could just, if you have a Phillips head, could just unscrew both of these and wrap some electrical tape around each of these uh, connections here, and then wrap uh, electrical tape around the whole thing, 
and it's it's still just one wire so that way you don't have to mess with this phoenix connector but we'd rather not do that it'd be too risky for us especially so we're gonna go ahead and snip these wires off cool. and then this will eventually go into a phoenix connector connecting the power straight to the motherboard all right now we can remove all of these you're going to want to eventually take off these phoenix connectors here but for now we're just going to leave it off to the side now we'll focus on the mounting bracket here so for these screws here you're going to need a three millimeter driver and they might be torqued in quite a bit with uh, initially so you might need some force to actually get them off but they should come off pretty easily after that so for the next part we're going to need a 2.5 millimeter allen key we recommend getting one of these long ones it'll be just a lot easier to reach down here if you don't have one that's okay uh, these screws will also be torqued in fairly well so again we probably need some proper force to actually get them out They're going to be on all four corners of this mounting bracket. Alright, now we should be able to lift the bracket itself off. And we should be able to lift off these brackets here. A lot of wire goes that way. There we go. Cool. And now we're down to the light source. So, next step, 2.5 millimeter driver, four screws once more on each side here. I'm just gonna take these off now, and that should unsecure the light source from the mid plate. screws um, you don't want to drop because now you've exposed the LCD screen you don't want to drop anything onto the glass here you could uh, crack it or scratch it up so taking off the light source now we can just set it down to the side and probably repurpose this for homemade UV curing machine but now we're gonna move on to installing the new light source all right so uh, one thing we forgot to mention is that you will have to remove this fan here. There are two three millimeter bolts here and here that you can take off. And then you'll also need to disconnect it from the Phoenix cable just by, you can just cut the wires off. Try and make sure you don't cut off the wrong wires, of course, otherwise you'll have to reconnect those back into this connector, which can be a pain. There we go. We can go ahead and remove this fan, and now we can begin the process of putting this new parallel light matrix into the machine. All right, so now we can finally begin putting together this parallel light matrix. So you're gonna have all the screws in your bag. You'll have four short 2.5 millimeter screws, four long 2.5 millimeter screws, and eight three millimeter screws. So for this first part, you're gonna to need to take these short brackets, and we're gonna attach them onto the heat sink. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put these screws in. I'm going to line them up so we can, we're going to go ahead and tighten this first one in just a little bit. That holds. And we can go ahead and tighten the second one in. Cool. This would be a lot easier if you do have a magnetic driver, so you don't have to deal with lining it up so much. But if you don't, you can make just make do by doing this. second one do the same thing all right so now we can go ahead and lift up we're going to place this down into the machine here let's go ahead and get this K 
cable out of the way. Great. All right, so you're going to want to place it down. So I am currently facing the front of the machine. You're going to want to place it down so that this uh, LED driver comes out on the left side. If you're looking, well, it's upside down. If you're looking at it from the front of the machine upside down, it should be on the right side here, facing the back, the back open slot there, you'll be on the left side. All right, so now we can finally start installing these brackets. So first bracket we're gonna install is this one, the longer extensions here and here. We're gonna go ahead and mount our long 2.5 millimeter screws into the bracket. Shift this. So you're gonna be shifting this around a bit because it's not tightened down yet. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do not uh, damage the screen or cable when you're doing that. See has the shorter extension. And this is going to be the side with the LED driver. So let's go ahead and mount our screws here. Put this down. So first things first, we're going to want to do is you're going to want to feed this LED driver. Oh, it's stuck on the heatsink there. I'm going to feed it through this hole here. So this LED driver is actually going to be situated on top of the mounting bracket where the main board is. So now we've got it through. Lay this down. Grab my driver. Line that up. Cool. Now we've got all our bracket or both our brackets here secured. So now we can secure the light source brackets onto the mid plate. You're going to use the four short 2.5 millimeter screws here. Oh. And I'm going to go ahead and secure the front first here. Cool. Now we can go ahead and secure the back. All right. So now we can finally put on this mounting bracket onto these brackets. Uh, you can see we've already put on the main board just for ease of use, ease of installation. So you're going to use your last four three millimeter uh, screws. We're just going to go ahead and secure this mounting bracket on. All right. Now we can go ahead and mount the LED driver onto the onto the mounting bracket here. So what we've done here is we've taken the piece of white foam that was originally holding onto this white touchscreen cable. We put it over these two uh, terminals here. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to mount this here onto this screw hole here. And you're going to want to use one of the M4 screws that came off when you were unscrewing the blackboard that was originally here. That'll be a 2.5 millimeter. Find my driver. There we are. And should just be able to screw right in and secure it down. Cool. And this should be more than enough to hold this in place and keep it safe. All right. So now we're just going to go ahead and take off these Phoenix connectors from. The old light source and all you need for this is just a small flat head and we're just going to go right here and just counterclockwise and should loosen it up a bit just to get these old connections out pretty simple all right and you're going to do this for all three of these phoenix connectors LED fans and the two that come off this board here. All right, so now it's time to reconnect all of our wires into these Phoenix connectors we've taken off from the old LED source. So what we're gonna do here is first, we're gonna have to strip these wires. These are LED fans and this is the power source 
uh, wires. <coughs> so let's take our, our wire strippers here. And you're gonna probably want to do about a quarter inch, three centimeters if you're uh, if you don't use the imperial system. All right, so if you have little connectors and a wire crimper like this, uh, you, it would be ideal to put these bare wires into, into these connectors, but if you don't, it's fine. You can just put the bare wire in, it's all good. All right, so inserting these into the Phoenix connectors, you're gonna wanna make sure your negative is on the left side here you're looking at it like this and your positive is on the right side if you can't remember you can always reference this fan wire that we cut off the that one fan with you can see the negative terminals on the left positive is on the right so, insert this no well first we gotta make sure we twist the wires up don't want any fraying Let's take our flathead, insert this. I'm just gonna tighten this down on top of it. All right, and now we can connect everything to the main board. So, if you aren't sure where each Phoenix connector connects to, there are little labels right above these connections. So this one will be the main board fan. This one will be the LED fans. This one will be the LED driver, and this will be your power source. So we'll connect them like so. Mm -hmm. What, Chris? Yeah. Oh, okay. um. All right. Now we can, now all we have to do left is to yeah, connect the know. remaining connection. Uh, no connectors so our z motor four pin connection goes in this terminal here and then our optical switch the three prong connection goes into the negative z terminal on this side here then we have our screen cable There we go. Right, just force to pull that down. All right, and next up, we'll just reconnect the touchscreen cable here. Go on this port here. Make sure it slides in all the way. It can be a bit tricky. There we go. There we go. All right, and then lastly should be your Ethernet and USB ports. There we go. All right, and that should be all. You should be set and done. Now all you have to do is uh, re-manage re your cables with some zip ties and you should be good to go.